the radiation pattern of an antenna which is three dimensional can be decomposed into two two dimensional planes as i told you earlier the actual pattern of antenna consists of x y and z axis which is the representation consumes three axis but when you actually draw the radiation pattern on a board or on a paper which are two dimensional planes it is not possible so that is the reason for our analytical convenience and for representation convenience we try to decompose a 3d radiation pattern into two 2d radiation patterns and each pattern is called a principal plane the pattern which we decompose will be understood in the form of two principal planes one plane is e plane other plane is h plane or we can say one plane is theta plane other is pi plane or we can say one plane is vertical plane other is horizontal plane so e plane is nothing but the vertical plane or theta plane and h plane is nothing but the horizontal plane or the phi plane so we shall see now the pictorial representation of how the radiation coming from an antenna looks like so as you can see here we have a radiation pattern which consists of a big globe like a balloon like you have a balloon like and that big balloon like shape which is bigger in size compared to other lobes which you find at the bottom in the bottom you find two lobes which are very smaller in size and downwards you find even smaller balloons technically in antenna radiation pattern terminology we call these as lobes the one which is bigger in size this is called the major lobe or the main lobe and the lobes that you find at the bottom two going this way and two going bottom these are small in size compared to this lobe so we say them as the minor lobes and this big lobe is called as the major lobe which means the majority of radiation coming from this antenna is going along the direction of that lobe so hence we say that lobe as the major lobe or the main lobe and the lobes which are at the bottom two lobes which are smaller in size going going on either directions we say them as side lobes and two lobes even smaller in size are pointing towards bottom we say them as back lobes because if i said this major lobe is in the forward direction we say that is completely opposite to that we say that as back lobes and two lobes going on either sides they are called side lobes but together this back lobes which are coming back and the side lobes together we say them as the minor lobes where the minority of radiation or little amount of radiation coming from an antenna is concentrated majority of radiation coming from antenna is directed towards this major lobe is contained or is possessed by this major lobe then we have certain aspects to be discussed in this figure as you can see as you move from the center where this lobe starts where the lobe originates where you have a actual radiator where you have an antenna as you move forward and forward means in this case as you move upward the radiation strength decreases means as you move from away from the antenna the strength of the radiation decreases at certain point from this antenna if we go along the major lobe the strength of the radiation becomes exactly half of the radiation that was available at the starting means as you move away from the antenna the radiation strength decreases on the major lobe you take two points p1 and p2 these points mark a distance on the major lobe where the strength of signal decreases to 50% of the maximum strength so since this p1 and p2 marks the points are joining in p1 and p2 we get the width of the lobe which indicates the lobe or a point on a point where you have 50% of the strength or half power if we join the points p1 and p2 you get the width of the lobe where you have half of the maximum power means we say these points are half power points and the width of the beam joining this p1 and p2 that width is called half power beam width because 
that is the width of the beam at which you get half power so that is called hp b w half power beam width and if you come towards bottom region to the antenna you find a major lobe and there is some gap after the major lobe on right side and left side means there is no radiation then after that gap you have small lobes right side you have small lobe left side that you can notice so you have a major lobe immediately you don't have a small lobe there is little gap in certain direction then you have small lobe so the gap between that major lobe and that side lobe in that gap in the direction there is no radiation in antenna terminology we say that as a null null means a direction in which there is no radiation so if you observe towards the right of the major lobe there is one null towards the left of the major lobe there is another null so if we join the points if we join the points along the beam we get the width of the beam connecting two nulls and these nulls may also occur for the second time first null is occurring between the major lobe and the first side lobe second null can also occur between the first side lobe and the second side lobe if the second side lobe exists and third null can also occur between the second side lobe and the fourth side lobe if the fourth side lobe exists so in this case i have one null which is present between the major lobe and the first side lobe this is called null so joining these two points where you are having nulls on either directions this is the width of the beam pointing for first nulls indicating first nulls so this is called as beam width between first nulls bw fn the width of the beam which indicates the directions which is giving you or containing the beam region which is possessed by the first nulls the region possessed between the first nulls we say bw fn beam area the beam area is symbolically denoted with ohm a ohm subscript a and the beam area is the sum of the major beam area plus minor beam area as you have seen earlier we have two types of beams major beam and minor beam there is one major beam and minor beam was consist consisting of side lobes back lobes together we say minor beam so the total beam area is the sum of major beam area that means major lobe and minor beam area means total side lobes and back lobes together it will give you the major beam area means it's something like a balloon so the major lobe you find like this on the screen but it is actually like a balloon a three dimensional one we can't de depict that 3d figure on this 2d plane that is the region antenna engineers will decompose that figure into two two dimensional planes one plane is called the elevation plane other is called the azimuthal plane or we can say e plane h plane or we can say theta plane phi plane so different ways of saying the same thing that means half power beam width in one plane because you can't see both the planes at a time on this figure on the screen what you are seeing so you can see only one plane either theta plane or phi plane since you have a bulge of major axis pointing like this pointing vertical so i can say that is theta plane i can say if you have a balloon like this this is along vertical plane so i can say that is theta plane or vertical plane or e plane as you have bulge like this the bulging of major lobe is like this you have a balloon like this you can also have a bulge like this now this is horizontal plane you have a bulge like this so you have a bulge like this and you have a bulge like this a balloon like this and like this so what you have seen in the screen earlier is a balloon like this which is vertical plane or theta plane or electric field plane now this imagine there is another plane in which the radiation pattern is also present and we cannot generate the 3d realistic radiation pattern without joining these two planes so when i say half power beam width earlier it is the half power beam width in theta plane which is represented as theta hp and if i say like this it is also half power beam width in phi plane then i say phi hp so that is the way how you understand when i say half power beam width 
half power beam width in theta plane, half power beam width in phi plane. So two ways of to be considered to generate the actual radiation pattern. The intensity of radiation coming from an antenna, which is indicated as the radiation intensity. As the name itself tells you, radiation intensity means the amount of radiation which is considered per unit solid angle. If I take an antenna, like this a dot, if I take an antenna, this is an antenna. If I say two-dimensional plane, the radiation coming from antenna will move like this in all the directions. But it is not 2D. In realistic sense, antenna radiates three-dimensionally. So not only like this, the antenna also radius like this. If you take in 2D, it is circle. The region surrounding this antenna is a circle. But antenna radiation is 3D pattern. So not circle, you take a sphere. So you have an antenna at the center. Then the radiation coming from antenna will cross the sphere from all the directions. Now take a particular angle in the sphere. If you take circle, we say angle. If you take sphere, we say solid angle. The difference is for two dimensional geometries, we say angle. Sphere is three dimensional. The reason we take sphere is antenna radiation pattern itself is three dimensional. So we take three dimensional geometry, which is sphere. When it is three dimensional, we no more say angle, we say solid angle. The angle subtended at the center of the sphere, a certain angle, maybe 10 degrees or 20 degrees. So how much amount of radiation from the antenna is leaving the sphere pertaining to a certain angle, a specific angle. So I can say the amount of radiation per a unit solid angle. It's just angle per unit angle, how much radiation is coming out of the sphere. But sphere is three dimensional, so I say solid angle. Radiation coming per solid angle. So amount of radiation we say in watts, electromagnetic power radiated in watts. Per solid angle means steradians. Angles we express in radians, whereas solid angles in steradians. That is unit. So watts per steradians is the unit for radiation intensity, which tells you the intensity of the radiation coming from the antenna. But most often we use the average radiation quite. So average radiation is indicated as U subscript AVG. U means radiation intensity. U subscript AVG means average radiation intensity because the radiation intensity may be different in different directions. To be practical, no antenna will radiate equal in all the directions. An antenna radiate more in this direction, may radiate less in this direction, it may radiate no radiation in this direction. So what is the amount of radiation per unit angle? That is radiation intensity. So if you take one particular direction, you have more radiation, intensity is more. If you take other direction, there won't be any radiation. So to get a good idea about the antenna, then take the average of that, average of the radiation intensities. So U AVG means average radiation intensity, which is mathematically equal to the ratio of P rad, means the radiated power, what is the actual power that is read by the antenna, divided by 4 pi. The reason I am taking 4 pi is because the surface area of the sphere, the radiation coming from the antenna is spreading out spherically. The radiation coming from the antenna is spreading out spherically because we are imagining a spherical surface, a 3D surface. And the surface area of sphere is 4 pi r square. And r is radius of sphere. Bigger radius means bigger value of r. If r is bigger, means you are at a farther distance from the center. If r is less, smaller sphere. If you take any point on the sphere, you are lesser distance from the center, from the antenna. Well, this r changes, but the common factor is 4 pi r square. Whatever may be the radius of sphere, it's a bigger sphere or smaller sphere, but the sphere is increasing or decreasing by a factor of 4 pi. So this sphere has a common factor of 4 pi. So the average radiation intensity U AVG is mathematically equal to P rad, the actual power that is radiated to 4 pi, the ratio of actual power radiated by 4 pi because 4 pi is the factor by which a sphere expands. Mm -hmm.